So in the last video, I showed you how to spin up a S3 bucket and copy some static HTML files to it and then host that behind CloudFront. Now we're gonna to try to deploy a really basic Lambda function and we'll probably touch on maybe like one or two additional AWS services in this video. So if you guys wanna learn more about AWS and Terraform, probably stick around. All right, so the first thing I wanna do is I wanna make another directory. I'll just call it like API. And inside of this, I'm gonna put a Docker file. And my plan is to deploy the Docker image and run it inside of Lambda because there's a lot of things you're going to run into when trying to deploy a you know some JavaScript to Lambda, and it's just easier in my opinion when you have an image that containerizes all of your stuff. But you guys can leave a comment if you don't think that's a good idea. So going to this URL, Gallery ECR AWS Lambda Node.js, they have a base image you can use to run Node.js on a Lambda function. So I'm going to go ahead and just pull in this image and change it to 22. And then following through this, you basically need to copy your JavaScript file into this directory. You need to specify a root handler. And then eventually you can go ahead and like run this. Okay, so since we are copying this app.js, we need to go over here and say app.js. And then we should probably do an exports handler and just like return some generic message back. Okay, so we're just gonna have a hello world message sent back. So I'm gonna go ahead and CD into the API folder just to verify this works following the instructions that they kind of say down here. Let's do a Docker build. I'll tag it with, uh, I don't know, API, and then I'll give it like the current working directory. And that's going to pull in that node 22 Lambda uh, image. And then it's going to basically copy my app.js into it. I'm gonna put that in a very specific location inside this image so that Lambda knows how to actually invoke it. And then eventually it should be able to call app.handler when I run this. So like this seems like it built correctly. Let's go over here and we are going to just try running it like they kind of recommend over here in the docs. So I'll clear this out, I'm gonna run it. And then I think uh, we need to give it the image name of API. So let's run that. And that is going to run some stuff. So basically this image, it has like a bunch of stuff already inside of it. It's like a Lambda runtime, which wraps your code and kind of hosts like a server inside of it. Notice that there's like a port 8080 inside of this machine. And so to test this out, you can actually grab this curl command and we're gonna invoke that function. So let's just go here, run this, and this should hopefully give us back that hello world message. Okay, so we've successfully built a Docker image that is compatible with running on Lambda. And then we've done a curl request on it to get some information back. Now, since we're keeping it as simple as possible, I'm not gonna try to bring in like Express or Sales or any type of like API framework. We just want a function that we know that we can actually run when we get this deployed out to AWS. And maybe in the next video, there are adapters you can use to basically create Express apps that'll run inside of Lambda, but it might take a little bit more work. So the next steps is I would try to get this stuff deployed out to an actual Lambda on our AWS account. And the easiest way to do this is to find a third-party module. In Terraform, people can create their own modules and publish them to GitHub, and then you can reuse those. So we're gonna go ahead and try to achieve this. So here's an example of this Terraform AWS modules, Lambda AWS modules Docker build, which is supposed to build up your image for you, deploy it to ECR, and then deploy your Lambda for you. So let's copy this code. And for right now, I'm actually gonna comment out all of that previous stuff we had before like all the bucket stuff because it's going to take a very long time for all this stuff to get created so i'm actually going to comment all this out for right now we just want our terraform aws provider in our region and i can make a new folder here and i'll call this api.tf and paste in all that code okay now looking at this code i don't think this is proper this is probably like your aws account um so i might actually refactor this and say please get my own aws account id here they have it hard coded. So yeah, let's grab that AWS caller identity. I don't think I have that defined anywhere in my app. So we should probably say data AWS caller identity. So we can get our current AWS account ID. Again, we'll have to try this out. I don't know if this is gonna work, um, but this is basically setting up some type of like registry so that later on when we try to deploy the Docker image to ECR, it knows where to do it. So hopefully this works. So let's actually talk about this first module. This is a Docker image module, which you can point it at a directory. So for example, our source path, we're going to say API. Uh, probably need to do dot dot slash and go up. You can pass a build args if you want, which we don't want to do yet. Um, you can tag it, which I think if you don't add that, it probably just does latest. I could say false. Um, and then you can define a ECR repo name. So I'll say this, create ECR repo. This should create it for us automatically. 
So basically this uses the Docker daemon on my computer to build up that Docker file like we just did and it's going to push it to a remote ECR registry so that later on when we try to deploy a Lambda function, which is the second module that we're going to talk about, it can point to this image that we just created. Okay, so it's going to create a my Lambda, I'll just call it WC API, and it should point to this Docker image. Package type image, I guess, is needed to get this all working. And while we're at it, I'm going to do a little refactoring. I'm going to go ahead and just say like ui.tf and paste all that code in. I'll keep it commented out, but I just want to move that to a different file. All right, so we should be able to cd into infra, and then I can say terraform init just to bring in those other modules that we kind of brought in. For example, like the, the Lambda module and this Docker build module. So we are getting a strange error, which uh, GPT is saying we should use Bruce Worker Docker, um, and we could actually use that instead. Let me try to apply this real quick and see if we can make some progress with that. There's basically a different implementation for how you can like interact with Docker. Um, and this is a big one that people use. Let me try this again and see if we can make some progress there. And in fact, I'm going to copy this. I think we already have a providers, so I need to just put that here in the Docker one. And then let's get rid of that. Let's try this. Okay, looks like it made some progress. Now let's actually try doing an apply with an auto approve. Okay, so hopefully if this works out, basically it's going to build our Docker image and then it's going to push it to ECR. The Lambda should use that Docker image for when it runs its code. And then we should be able to log into AWS and just verify that these resources kind of exist and do what we think they should. All right, Terraform is done running. So let's go over to ECR, which I'm already, I already have open, but type in ECR and go to Elastic Container Registry. And you'll see our repository is here now. If you look at it, we have one image, tagged as latest, which has our node code. And then if we also go into Lambda, we should be able to see a Lambda function um, called WDC API. If I click on this Lambda, you will see that it is deployed out and it's pointing to that image. So we successfully built an image and we got it deployed out and Lambda is actually going to run this image. So if we want to actually test this out, let's click on test. And then we can create a new event over here. I'll just say like testing. And then all we want to do is just send over some information and see what happens. So I'm just going to go ahead and just save this. I'll, I'll click test and let's see what happened. So we are getting a little error and it might be because I built this image on my laptop, which is a Mac, but Lambda is going to be running on Linux. For what I'm seeing, we should probably force this to be Linux AMD 64. And I think we're going to have to like force this thing to um, rerun because right now I don't think it determines if this thing has changed. So we could probably just force the image tag to be one or something and just say true. Let's try this just to see if we can get it out there. Okay, so it looks like it's rebuilding that image and it should deploy it. All right, that's all done. Let's just go ahead and grab this invocation and test it out. We should hopefully get back a hello world message. Okay, there's no error, which is good. Let's go back to our log streams and see what this one has. It didn't fail, which is good. Let's go back to our Lambda, refresh. We should see one invocation at some point. We might have to wait a little bit of time um, for it to show up. But yeah, I think this is working. Uh, one thing we could also do is if you wanted to test this now, I think just adding that platform might have fixed it. So like if I just run this with this test message, it's now working and we get back hello world. All right, so the main takeaway of that little issue we ran to was I'm building an image on my, my Mac operating system which is not going to be compatible when you deploy it to Lambda because Lambda needs to be Linux. So adding this little platform flag forces it to grab and build the right image. So don't forget about that because I just wasted like a decent amount of time trying to debug that. But yeah, now we have it deployed out. We can actually verify it through this test thing. We can view the logs. And if you want to like make a little change, you can just go in here and like, you know, add a console log, like what is up? Now, right now, when I rerun Terraform, it doesn't automatically pick up these changes. Like, it doesn't think that these things have changed. So there might be a way to actually, like, have this create a shawl over these files and, like, rebuild it and deploy it if it changes. But an easier way is just go ahead and just update this to 1.1 .1, um, and then just go ahead and rerun this. And then next time we invoke that Lambda, it should console log that change that we displayed here. All right, that looks like it's done. Let's just go back and test it out one more time. Let's go to test. Let's run it. And when it's done running, we should see a log, hopefully print out. Yeah, what is up? So it prints out the log that we just added. Yeah, so that's about it. Hopefully you've learned three new things on Amazon by watching this. You learned what ECR is, is where we're storing these container images when they're built. 
And then once they're in ECR, we are pulling those images and using them inside of the lambdas, which we kind of see here. If you go to the configuration, you can see that it is pointing to the image URI. And then finally, we learned a little bit about CloudWatch. So like when your Lambda runs, you can go into here and view the logs and try to understand like, you know, what's happening in your Lambda function, etc. So I think that's a good enough stopping point for this video. In the next one, I will add on to it and maybe do a little bit of refactoring. So have a good day. Happy coding.